Well friends, today we will cover hydratate disease of the liver. Hydratate disease or echinococcosis is a zoonosis that is acquired from animals that occurs primarily in sheep grazing areas of the world. But it is common worldwide because the dog is a definitive host. There are three species of echinococcus that cause hydratate disease. Echinococcus granulosus is the most common whereas Echinococcus multilocularis and Echinococcus orgatus account for a small number of cases. Dogs are the definitive host of Echinococcus granulosus. Sheep are usual intermediate host but humans are accidental intermediate host. Humans are end stage to the parasite. That means once the infection occurs in the human body it is not transmitted further to any other animal or human. In the blood oncospia reaches the liver which is the most common organ or it may reach lungs where the parasite develops its larval stage known as hydratid cyst. The clinical presentation of hydratid cyst is largely asymptomatic. Once it grows in the liver it starts producing its symptoms. It may take 3 weeks to 3 years for its presentation to occur. The most common presenting symptoms are abdominal pain, dyspepsia and vomiting. The most frequent sign is hepatomegaly. So don't forget to examine liver or locate this hepatomegaly in your answers which is the most common presentation. Jaundice and fever are present in about 8% of patients. There is a sign called as camulate sign. It is following intrabiliary rupture, gas enters into cyst causing partial collapse of the cyst wall. So there is partial collapse of the cyst wall and you can locate that gas on x-rays. Differential diagnosis by hepatoma, amoebic liver abscess, cystic disease of the liver. So whenever there is cystic disease of liver, it may be associated with primary multi-systemic involvement. Patient may present with multiple cysts in the liver. It may be amoebic liver abscess with production of the gas inside or it may not be having gas inside or hepatoma which may have cystic degeneration inside it. What are the complications of the hydratid cyst of the liver? This can be anaphylaxis after rupture. Obstructive jaundice may be there if the cyst compresses on one of the biliary radicals. So in these cases, ERCP with sphincterotomy may be needed. Cyst may get infected and can present as empyema or liver abscess. Cyst may undergo calcification. Or whenever there is involvement of the both lobes of the liver, patient may present with signs of liver failure. So how this rupture occurs? Ruptures of a cyst in the biliary tree or bronchial tree or free rupture into the peritoneal or pleural or pericardial cavities can occur. Free rupture can result in disseminated echinococcosis which can be potentially fatal due to anaphylaxis. How do you diagnose echinococcosis? Ultrasound is the diagnostic. So if you are asked which of the following will you use for diagnosis of echinococcosis, it is the ultrasound. It reveals rosettes of daughter cysts, double contour membrane of the cyst due to detachment of the cyst membranes. So if the cyst membranes get detached from each other, you can feel that is double contour on ultrasonography and calcification of the cyst wall. Intraoperative ultrasound can also be very helpful during surgery. X-ray will often show calcification. Now we will see Hassan Garvey's ultrasound based classification of liver hydratid cyst. So type 1 is pure fluid collection, type 2 is fluid collection with split wall, type 3 is fluid collection with septa. So you see now this sim from simple cyst it is getting complicated. So for earlier types of classification the more easier option is available. As you go down the cyst classification it becomes difficult to treat. So type 3 is fluid collection with septa, type 4 is heterogeneous appearance and type 5 is reflecting thick walls. Now we will see WHO classification of liver hydrated cyst which can especially be used for one of the treatment modalities which is called as pair. Type 1 is type CL which has got active cyst which is unilocular but no cyst wall. It is early stage, it is not fertile. Then type called CE1 which is active, cyst wall is present, hydratid sand is present and it is fertile. Then there is type CE2 which is active, multivesicular rosette like cyst but it is fertile. 
there is type CE3 which is transitional with detaching laminated membrane which has got water lily sign. It means whenever there is hydrated sand floating in the level which is present in the hydrated, it may be like lilies which are floating on the water which is called as water lily sign beginning of degeneration. Then there is type CE4 which is inactive degenerative cyst with contents of it which has got no daughter seeds and which is not fertile. CE5 is inactive thick calcified wall which is not fertile. So you may be asked various questions which of the following classification of the cyst which is not fertile or which is fertile. So you should remember the first one that is CL and CE4 and CE5 these are not fertile but CE1, 2, 3 are fertile. Now we will see CT scan how it is helpful. CT scan abdomen is most accurate in identifying cyst characteristics cartwheel like or multivesicular or rosette like. So if you got confusion on ultrasonography of which type of cyst it is you may resort to a CT scan along with its identification as a hydrated cyst the CT scan will give you anatomical orientation with respect to the biliary radicals. So if you are planning for definitive surgery if the biliary radical is very close then you can plan accordingly. These studies can also evaluate extrahepatic disease and demonstrate detailed hepatic anatomical relationship with the cyst. In patients with suspected biliary involvement, ERCP or percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography which is called as PTC may be necessary. Whenever in the ma management modality, once you puncture the hydrated, you may have to inject dye inside the cyst which will reveal any communication with biliary radicals. So if there is communication with biliary radicals, this may be required to treat it because if afterwards if not treated, it may cause bile leak. Primary serological tests like ELISA are available. Indirect hemagglutination test, latex agglutination test, immunofluorescence antibody tests are available. So immunoelectrophoresis, it has got 80 to 95 percent sensitivity for liver hydrated. Amongst liver function tests, which can be done are liver enzymes and bilirubin to document hepatic cell dysfunction. Cassoni's test is an old test which is not done nowadays. It is intradermal test which has got 75 percent sensitivity. It is complement fixation test. Cassoni's test they may ask you question like if it is immunofluorescence or complement fixation test. So you have to pick up accordingly. Now we will see what are the treatment options available. First we have the drug line of treatment. So we will see indications for drug therapy. Routinely drugs are given 4 days prior to the intervention and they are continued for 1 month after the intervention. Especially albendazole which is continued for 1 month or mevendazole which may be continued for 3 months after the intervention. The drugs can be given for inoperable cysts. Patient if has got multiple or multi organ cysts which cannot be operated upon they can be preferred with drug therapy. If the patient has got recurrent hydratids after surgeries or if has got disseminated hydratids, patient may be given drug therapy. If the patient is surgically unfit, then also drugs are helpful. Cyst in the lungs or inaccessible regions, if the cysts are at the hilum or if they are at bone which cannot be accessed or if they are in brain near the very vital areas or in the intraocular cysts, they may be given drug therapy. What are the contraindications for the drugs? So if the cyst is very much large, if it is likely to rupture, then it is contraindicated because surgery is straightforward and will cure the patient. Honeycomb in the cyst with having multiple septa. Infected cyst because if there is infection, the cysts need to be drained. Calcified cyst. Pregnancy. We will see what are the drugs which are used. Albendazole is used 4 week cycle with 2 weeks drug free. It is ovicidal, larvicidal, vermicidal. Albendazole is most commonly used. We can use praziquantel at dose of 60 mg per kg along with albendazole for 2 weeks. Mebendazole 600 mg daily can be used for 4 weeks. Now we will see surgical or interventional aspects of the hydrated disease treatment. First we have got the pair which is made from percutaneous aspiration, infusion of solicidal agent and re-aspiration. 
I repeat, it is P for percutaneous, A for aspiration, I for infusion of scolicidal agents, and R for re-aspiration. It has got 75% efficacy. It is earlier thought that aspiration of hydrated cyst can give rise to the anaphylactic reaction. But with this treatment, it is now being proved that aspiration doesn't cause anaphylaxis. So it has now become one of the modalities for treatment for hydrated cyst disease. Pair is contraindicated in superficially located cysts. So whenever the cysts are located near the liver capsule, the cysts are likely to be ruptured whenever once you puncture them. So if the cyst is located near the capsule, it's contraindicated. Then cysts with multiple thick internal septal divisions showing honeycombing patterns. It is contraindicated because you may not aspirate all the cyst cavities and one of the cyst cavity may remain undrained. So patient will again get the recurrence. So this is contraindicated in multiloculatory cysts. Then cysts with communicating with the biliary radicals. So if one of the cyst wall has communication with the biliary radicals, pair is contraindicated. So we will see how it is contraindicated. During the procedure, once you aspirate around 50% of the cyst, it is punctured with large bolt around 22 gauge needle, 50% of the fluid which is there in the cyst wall it is aspirated and a scolicidal agent like hypotonic saline, cetrimide is put. After these scolicidal agents are put in the cyst, you wait for 20 minutes. After waiting 20 minutes, you again re-aspirate. After aspiration of the cyst, if the cyst is more than 6 cm in size, a catheter can be left in the cyst to cause continuous drainage along with alcohol inside the cyst wall. So whenever you put this colicidal agent, it is very important that you should rule out biliary communication with the cyst wall. So after you aspirate 50% of the fluid inside the cyst, the biliary communication is ruled out by installation of radio-opaque contrast in the cyst wall. So if the radio opaque contrast once instilled in the cyst, if it gets communicated with any of the bilir radicals, then you should use only agent which is hypertonic saline for making the cyst sterile. So in these cases, where there is communication with the cyst wall to the bilir radicals, you cannot use alcohol which is 80%, absolute alcohol cannot be used, you cannot use hydrogen peroxide and you cannot use formalin. So all these agents are very much toxic when they are communication with the biliary radicals. So whenever there is biliary radical communication, you can use only hypertonic saline. So if you are asked question, which of the following can be used if there is communication with the biliary radical, it is hypertonic saline. Now we will see what are the modalities of the surgery. First is the removal of ectocyst. You know the cyst is made up of pericyst, ectocyst and endocyst. So if you find the cyst which is not suitable for pair or not suitable for medical line of treatment. So this can be done with adequately with open surgical approach. So you take the incision on pericyst and you remove the ectocyst and endocyst along with the brood capsule or contents of the cyst. You should adequately organize the mops which are soaked in colicidal agent before opening the cyst. Then next is the cystopericystectomy. So in these cases, cyst wall along with the pericyst is also taken out. So you go out the membrane which is formed by the body which is called as pericyst and you take out the liver parenchyma along with the cyst wall. So this is very radical surgery. It may associated with the biliary fistulas. So before surgery you should rule out any biliary radical which is very close by. Then liver resection can be done if it is involving or it is very close to one of the biliary radical. So that part of the liver can be sacrificed if it is very close to the biliary radical and if you are likely to injure one of the biliary radicals. So whenever there is deficient or when there is deficient parenchyma in the liver, this parenchyma can be fitted with omentum or you may close it down with sutures which may be called as capitonage. So friends, we will see now what is the malignant hydrated disease. So it is a misnomer because it is basically a benign disease which is caused by echinococcus multilocularis, which is also called as alveolaris. It presents with multiple small cysts in both lobes of liver, which are spread over both of the lobes of the liver. It is difficult to treat and it may mimic clinically and prognosis-wise to the malignancy. Hence, it is given as malignant hydrated disease. 
patients of malignant hereditary disease caused by echinococcus multilocularis they die of liver failure because of extensive involvement of the liver and associated fibrosis so hereditary disease of the liver it is much more common in india and other mediterranean countries where the grazing uh, sheep and dogs are seen in the cattle field so friends we saw what are the main features of hereditary disease what are the modalities of diagnosis of hereditary disease like ultrasonography and we saw what are the main treatment options available for hereditary disease such as spare and open surgery thank you